So now that we understand the invariant of our linear search, and we also understand how we can use that invariant to prove that our linear search is correct, it's time to do some analysis on the search. Most of the algorithms, we're going to look at the invariants, look at the correctness, and also do the analysis. And so you're probably thinking, Jamie, this, this linear search is really taking a lot. Yeah, we're setting a foundation for all the analysis we're going to do on all the algorithms. So we're finally looking at the time complexity of this algorithm. There's time and space. But by far, we, we look at time more often, but space is also critical too. Without further ado, let's check out this algorithm here. Basically, when we're doing an analysis, we, we just want to say, hey, uh, how long is this going to take? And by how long is this going to take, we're saying, well, what's the worst case? And I always remember thinking back in my own algorithms class, like, why are you so pessimistic? Why are you always looking at the worst case? You could get lucky. You could find the element you're looking for in the first place that you're looking for it. Or, you know, more often than not, there's an average case. What's the case that's going to happen the most? And so I thought, teacher, why are we always looking at the worst case? Well, the reason we look at the worst case is because it gives us uh, an upper bound, a max. I mean, it, it, this is as far as the algorithm will take us time-wise or expense-wise looking at time. So anyway, we target that upper worst case because we know we're not going to go past that. Anyway, let's, let's look at this linear search here. How can we look at this linear search and figure out what's the longest it's going to take? Well, what's the, what's the worst case here? Right? Say, say I have some elements. Don't blink. So we can look at this, this array and say, what's, what's the max number of times we're going to have to go through this array? Well, if we're looking for the value 8, right, best case, best case scenario, if we're looking for the value 8, uh, that's that's one, right? Uh, but if we're looking for the value seven, that's going to take us all the way to the end of the array there. So we'll have to do one, two, three, four, five. Doesn't that throw you off being zero base sometimes? Because we do this. We say, well, this is actually one, even though it's zero. So one, two, three, four, five comparisons. Right? Notice we have five elements in our array. Here's a variable we're going to see tons of times throughout this playlist. In this case, n is equal to 5. n is the number of elements in our list. And sometimes n will depend on other factors. But generally, with an algorithm, we're looking at what's the, the length or the size of our input set or our data. In this case, there's five elements. So n equals 5. So we're going to keep that, that around. Um, but actually, the worst case scenario in here is not looking for the 7. It's looking for the value, I don't know, 4? You see a 4 in here anywhere? No. No. If we look for a 4, that's going to make us fall off the end of the cliff here. We're not going to find the 4. So worst case is we actually don't find the item that we're looking for. So we'll roll with that. Let's, let's look at this algorithm up here and see if we can just get an idea how long this is going to take. Uh, how many times is this part here, this this uh, i equals 0. Int i equals How many times is that going to execute? And that's hopefully straightforward. A for loop, the uh, initialization only happens once and only once. And this for loop's not inside of any for loop, other for loops. So we'll say this is going to happen one time. All right, and then after we do our initialization of for loop, we move on to the check or the comparison, the test, whatever you want to call this. Uh, i less than array dot length. Well, that's going to happen for this item. It's going to happen for this uh, and this item and this item and this item. And for the worst case, we actually have to do the check one more time to see that we fell off the end of the list here. So that's going to be one, two, three, four, five, six times. Six times. Well, that doesn't really tell me anything if, if my array set jumps to 27 items. Because if it's 27 items, then that six will change to... Uh, a 28. Okay, it's always one more than the number of items inside of our array here. So what we're going to do instead is say, well, we know with five items it's going to be six, with 27 it's going to be eight. We're going to use this n variable, n being the number of items in our list. We'll just use that and say, well, it's n plus one plus one being the check that takes us off the edge of our cliff here. And then just like a for loop, I'm going to actually come down here and look at this before we look at the i++. Uh, how many times are we going to do this check? How many times are we going to say, well, the array sub i equal target value? Well, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. But we don't do it for this one because we'll break out of the loop. 
because of this less than. So 5. All right, well, n equals 5. Hey, we're going to do this n times. All right, now let's just say after the first time or the zeroth time. I'll call this the zeroth time because we're zero base. So the zeroth time we do the comparison, we come up here and we say i plus plus. Well, how many times are we going to do i plus plus? Pause the video. All right, you know, I, got, I like you guys pause the video. Pause the video, and before I tell you, figure out how many times we're going to do i plus plus. You should be able to figure that out. Pause. Pause. Ugh, I, I'm going to get a drink while you do that. Mm. Do you like my kids' cups that are all, I don't know, beat up from the dishwasher? I mean, I, I can't even tell what's on here, to be honest. <laughs> If you haven't reproduced yet, get a permit to do so, and then you're going to have a house full of these cups that have cool graphics on them that get scratched off. My boy just brought a new one home from a birthday party yesterday. It was kind of cool. All right, I++. plus plus. I++. Plus plus. Well, after we're done with this one, we'll go one, two, three, four, five. When this loop is over, I will be five, uh, which will take us past the end of the array, because 5 is not less than array.length, array.length is 5. So this is actually n. We're going to do that n times. Now let's look at this return. If this test ever passes, meaning we found the item, then we're going to do this return one time. But you know what? We're looking at the worst case, meaning we'll actually never, ever do that return. And even if we did, it'd just be 1. It would only execute one time. Um, but worst case scenario, we're not going to find the item we're looking for. So this return executes. And so I'll put a 1 right there. Uh, you notice both returns are just 1 or 1, so it doesn't matter. They're both worth 1. But we know this one will never execute, so I'm going to put a 0 there. And then I'm going to clear up some screen real estate here. And we're going to do a lot of ugly, very ugly looking math. But to be honest, it's super simple once we get to the end result. So I don't even care if you understand... Uh, well, it'd be nice if you understand what I'm about to take you through, but uh, algorithms books will take you through all this complicated stuff. Uh, I'm going to do the same, but uh, we're going to simplify this a little bit. All right? How much time does it take to do an assignment on the computer I'm on right now? I'm on my laptop. Well, it doesn't really matter, does it? Because if we move this algorithm to your laptop or your desktop or maybe your piddly little laptop, I don't know. All right, moving this algorithm to a different computer doesn't make my algorithm more efficient. All right, I actually worked for a place that they were like, oh, I, they literally told me this, Jamie, you can write the worst code that you want to. I'll just check more hardware at it. No. <laughs> I, I, my government works that way. Oh, just keep chucking money at the problem, money we don't even have. All right. <laughs> really? It's okay for me to write wasteful code because I have better hardware. I mean, if you look at consoles like an Xbox 360 or the new Xbox One, the Wii or the Wii U, I like to look at the older consoles because, man, those guys make screaming, awesome, very complex games on those weak little consoles. If you understood how weak the Wii is compared to the Wii U or the Xbox 360, but even the Xbox 360, yeah, it's got a little bit of power in there, but not compared to the Xbox One, but the games still look good. And the reason they look good is because there's passionate engineers that use up every ounce of power they can out of those machines. They squeeze so much. They're so efficient. I wish those engineers worked in my government because then our taxes would be lower and our output would be higher. All right, don't don't tell me that I have more hardware. You can buy me more hardware, so waste all that. No, no, <laughs> that's okay. Sorry, I ran, but that's just stupid. Okay, um, so it's it, this assignment could take thirty seconds on my computer. All right, I, I could talk about milliseconds, nanoseconds, clock ticks, um, and, and believe me, yes, my computer is much faster than 30 seconds for this assignment. Otherwise, I'd be returning this computer. Um, but, you know, just for tickles, just for our sanity, we could say, well, this takes two seconds, all right, this assignment here. Because, you know, we're humans and seconds seem to make more sense than microseconds, nanoseconds. Um, milliseconds. Uh, the less than. How long does the less than take? Well, we'll say that takes one second. And the plus plus, well, we'll say that's 1.5 seconds. And the equal equal, we'll say that's also one second as well. I'm trying to draw S's, but my tablet's not working out very well. 
But I don't really want to keep track of these S's and 1.5 here, 2 there, so so on and so forth. So we'll just say, you know what, this, this takes some amount of time. All right, we'll call it T1. But T kind of is variable there. So, so what we'll see in, in our algorithm text is constant time of one. It's, it's, it could be one second, two seconds. I, it's, it's some unchanging amount. That's why we call it constant time. We'll call it constant one because there's several constants here. I mean, one second was different from two seconds. So we'll call this, well, this is a constant amount of time two. And this will be constant amount of time three, like so. And then I know this one was equal to that one, but you know, maybe on your computer an equal sign takes longer than less than, so they won't always be equal. So we'll say, well, the equal equal, that takes a constant amount of time four. All right, so let's let's lay all this out. I, I got, um, let's see, one times constant one will be constant one. We need to add that to constant two times n plus one. And then we got n times constant three, which we could really write constant three times n, just to be consistent, we'll keep our constants on the left, plus constant four times n plus one for our return there. I'll put a plus one at the end there. Okay, cool. I'm gonna erase this array down here so we got some room to work. So first things first, let me distribute this, this constant two times n and n plus one. I'm just gonna erase that. And by distribute, I mean c2 times n, c2, uh, times one, so that'll be C2 times N plus C2 times one will just be C2. Let's group all the terms together. So I'm gonna group all these N's together, all these constants, we'll throw the one out at the end there. So we're gonna do C2 times N, that takes care of that, plus C3 times N, takes care of that, plus C4 times N, C4 times N, takes care of that. Then we got C1, C2, and one. So plus C1 plus C2 plus one. And then let's factor out all these n's, all right? We, we can factor them. Uh, if you know how to factor, n comes out, n comes out, uh, n comes out. So I can write n once, put the n right here, gives us C2, done with that plus C3, done with that, plus C4, done with that, plus the rest of this stuff, and we're done with all that. So there you go, whew, whew. <laughs> I remember the first time I saw similar math in an algorithms text, and I was like, wow, this analysis stuff is gonna take a PhD. And to be honest, the people that write the algorithms text, they're so mathematical, they're so laser accurate, I just, they're awesome. But it, it's way more complicated than it needs to be. This looks complex, but to be honest, we're just looking for the order of this equation. Let's use layman words here. What's the dominating uh, term in here? Okay, let's. what's gonna control this entire function? All right, it's actually, pretty straightforward. First of all, if I gave you a million dollars and all this right here up to the one, all this could be like a million dollars. You run, you run a hundred miles all times up by a bunch of stuff and out pops a million, million dollars. Or hey, you know, you run a thousand miles then I'll give you a billion dollars because we're multiplying and adding all this stuff. This here is, is kind of what controls the function. If, if I, if I say, well, I'm going to leave out that one dollar, but I'm going to give you a million dollars. Do you really care about this one dollar here? No, you don't. Right, like, yeah, keep your dollar. All right, so I guess what color should I use? I'm running out of colors. I hate to use green to X things out, but okay. You don't care about this one dollar. Well, if I drop off these constants on the end here, say these constants add up to a hundred bucks. All right, we'll just, we'll put some actual numbers here. Say these constants here added up to a hundred dollars. And these constants here, let's say they added up to ten dollars. Okay, that's less than 100, but I'm taking the 10 and I'm multiplying it to the number of miles you run. So you run 1,000 miles, that's going to give you $10,000. All right, well, no, that's not a bad setup, okay? Even though this 10 is less than the 100, 10,000 dominates the 100. Hey, 
you want to run 2,000 miles? Well, that's cool. We'll just double this. So you get $20,000. All right. These constants are what's helping out your running because this is just gravy on the end. Oh, you get an extra 100 bucks. Well, after you get your $20,000, yeah, you want the $100. But if I say, you know what, I'm not down with that part of the deal. I'm just going to drop it because this part of the equation is not growing with the amount of miles that you're running. So we actually just throw this off. We ignore it. It's not even there. We did all this math with all this stuff, and that stuff doesn't even exist because it's dead to us, right? They're constants. They don't change with the number of values in the list, right? Throw it away. Chump change. We don't need that. Okay. Well, let's let's negotiate a little bit here. Let's say $10. Well, maybe you say, you know what, Jamie? I want you to do... $100. Maybe these will add up to $100. Ooh, let's, let's add it up to $200. Okay, we can negotiate all day long about what these constants add up to. And in the end, I say, you know, yeah, okay. Yeah, these constants adding up to a bigger value is going to benefit you. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. But, you know, if we set this up where we did our car race uh, a few videos ago, maybe I think it was two videos ago. If we set it up where it's not just n, but it's say it's n times n, and I say I'm gonna I'm gonna chuck all these costs, I'm gonna rip them off, and instead for every mile you run, I'll give you one dollar, and if you run two miles, that'll be four, and three miles will be nine, and four miles will be sixteen. You see how it's n times n now. This is a whole new dimension of growth, just like we saw with the car race video. So. Really, at that point, these constants aren't even worth fighting over. What you really should be fighting for is a higher order of growth. I'm going to use that word order a lot. Not going to get into the details too much in this video, but probably next video or video after that, uh, depending. We'll, we'll talk about the order, but I, I just want to cue you in here that you shouldn't be negotiating over the size of these constants. You should be negotiating over the order of our function here. Because if you can negotiate me to n times n, that's going to dominate the n. Remember our earlier video? I just totally dominated you. That's how we actually look at these algorithms is the long-term growth. Uh, is it n or is it n times n? Can we get a logarithmic function, that kind of thing? We don't even care about these functions. So we did all this math and looked at all these crazy constants. And the only thing we care about out of this mess that we made here is n. This is the only thing that matters is the order of the function. This n is not n squared quadratic. It's n. It's not logarithmic. We'll get into logarithmic functions soon enough. Uh, it's not exponential. Look at me getting this right. It's not exponential. These are classifications of functions. And when we look at our algorithm, we want to say, well, where does our algorithm fall in? Well, with a, uh, a linear search here, that's why we call it linear. Linear order of growth. I'll draw the x, y axis here, but remember, we don't care about the negatives. So I'm just going to drop it there. And with linear growth, woo, that line just takes off, right? You got one item, then it takes one amount of time, whatever time is on your computer. You got two items, then it takes two amount of time. Three items, three amount of time, so on and so forth. Then it grows linearly all right now yeah i could say 2n remember we had all those constants i raised and maybe all those constants added up to two and yeah that would increase our slope here and yes this function grows faster than n but as far as the order of the function the order is an exponent of one right here right this is really end of the one oh not end of the end end of the one right it's uh, really, the difference we're, we're shooting for is, do you grow linearly, or do you grow exponentially, or maybe you go logarithmically, so on and so forth. So, anyway, this, this video is taking too long, but I just wanna, want you to gather that, yeah, we do a lot of crazy, scary math out here, but in the end, all we're looking for is the order of this function. I'll say that, <laughs> that word a thousand times, the order, what click, what club, what fraternity does our algorithm here fall into in this case it's linear it's n it's not as elite as logarithmic and it's not elite as constant time we'll talk about constant time but but hey n's not so bad it's it's kind of like the c plus grade so to say so anyway lots more to examine with growth and stuff we'll do that in future videos